state asserted its power over money and came to rely heavily upon the signature technology of industrialism, the printing press. The first implement of mass production, the printing press, has been widely used by governments in the modern period to mass produce paper money. Paper money is a distinctly industrial product. It would have been impractical before the printing press to duplicate receipts or certificates that became paper currency. Certainly, monks in the scriptoria would not have spent their time well drawing 50-pound notes. Paper money also contributed significantly to the power of the state, not only by generating profits from depreciating the currency, but by giving the state leverage over who could accumulate wealth. As Abu Lugod put it, when paper money backed by the state became the approved currency, the chances for amassing capital in opposition to or independent of the state machinery became difficult. Cybercash Now, the advent of the information age implies another revolution in the character of money. As cyber commerce begins, it will lead inevitably to cyber money. This new form of money will reset the odds, reducing the capital of the world's nation-states to determine who becomes a sovereign individual. A crucial part of this change will come about because of the effect of information technology in liberating the holders of wealth from expropriation through inflation. Soon, you will pay for almost any transaction over the net or World Wide Web at the same time you place it, using cybercash. This new digital form of money is destined to play a pivotal role in cyber commerce. It will consist of encrypted sequences of multi-hundred-digit prime numbers. Unique, anonymous, and verifiable, this money will accommodate the largest transactions. It will also be divisible into the tiniest fraction of value. It will be tradable at a keystroke in a multi-trillion dollar wholesale market without borders. Dialing without dollars Inevitably, this new cyber money will be denationalized. When sovereign individuals can deal across borders in a realm with no physical reality, they will no longer need to tolerate the long-rehearsed practice of governments degrading the value of their money through inflation. Why should they? Control over money will migrate from the halls of power to the global marketplace. Any individual or firm with access to cyberspace will be able to easily shift out of any currency that appears in danger of depreciation. Unlike today, there will be no necessity to deal in legal tender. Indeed, in transactions spanning the globe, it will be likely that at least one party to every transaction will find himself dealing in a currency that is not legal tender to him. Disadvantages of barter reduced It is to be expected that one or more nation-states will undertake covert action to subvert the appeal of transients. Travel could be effectively discouraged by biological warfare, such as the outbreak of a deadly epidemic. This could not only discourage the desire to travel, it could also give jurisdictions throughout the globe an excuse to seal their borders and limit immigration.